my friend Doug, who I hired at Amblin, which is Steven Spielberg's company, was at his grandmother's funeral. And he was walking back to the car with the rabbi. And the rabbi said, I have a script in my car. Could you please give it to Steven? Is it easy for a great script to go nowhere? A great script, a truly great script, if you have any connection to anybody in the entertainment industry who can look at that and know it's a great script, it's going to go someplace. You're going to get you're going to get recognized. People will call you. They'll want to take you out for lunch or drinks. They'll want to um, hire you to write for them. They'll want to um, ha be in business with you in some way. A great script. Now, if you are living in Oshkosh and you don't know anybody and you're not willing to submit your scripts to contests, it could go nowhere. But if you're willing to get it out there in a way that someone in the entertainment industry would get eyes on it, you will go somewhere for sure. So if someone's script is not quote unquote going anywhere, is it safe to assume it's not any good? Well, what I say is scripts need to be blazing hot. My first boss said that writing is choices. And when you have a character who has to make a choice, the first choice you come up with, anybody could come up with. My dentist would come up with. The second choice, pretty obvious. The third choice, a little bit less. And then four, five, and six, if you can push yourself to there, it's getting better. If you're at eight, nine and 10, and not many people are 10, that you've forced yourself to try 10 different choices until you get to the very best choice, then that script is good. But if you're, if you're at four or five and you try four or five things and you said, no, this, this is, this is good enough. Then if it's been out there in the marketplace for three or four or five months, it's not the marketplace, it's your script. It's not ready. And I encourage you to either rewrite it or write something else because every time you write a new script, it's gonna get better. So it's not them, it's me. Yes. Okay. And what we talked about earlier was that when you meet a storyteller, you can kind of tell that, you know, they see the world in a very different way. They're very dialed in to little details. And is that where the, the real beauty of a storyteller takes over is that that taking it beyond level four yes. in terms of how you know little nuances to the to the script. Yes, I think so. Great storytellers are at seven, eight, nine. Uh, brilliant, you know, Aaron Sorkin, 10. Right. But the rest of us humans, you know, <laughs> regular people. It's not fair, yeah. Seven, eight, nine. You know, that if you're willing to bleed for it, <laughs> to get to seven, eight, or nine, then I think you're probably a really good storyteller. What are the best ways for a new writer to get industry pros to read their script? Really good question. If you don't know anybody, there are, first of all, beware, be really wary of coverage services. They're not all made equally. You need to know who's reading your script. It could be a junior executive. It could be a bartender. And what I tell people is if you are getting coverage, um, only listen to what resonates. And if you re and be really honest with yourself, is that a good note? Is that a note from somebody who doesn't get what I'm doing at all? So one way is contests. Um, you don't have to know anybody to enter your scripts into contests. And if you come in first, second, or third in a prestigious contest, agents, managers, producers will find you. If you don't do that, 
there are services, but always check and see who is behind the service, what their real credits are. And if they've been doing something, if they were a reader for six months, that's not who you want. Okay. So having never entered a contest, would they say who some of the industry professionals are, or they say have worked with, but you don't actually know the person's name, can't check their credits? You mean in a contest right. or a coverage service? Right. If they're not telling you, then don't go there. Right. Yeah. I'm always wary of websites, whatever industry, where you don't know the family name or the person behind it, even if there's yeah. no picture, but just to have a general sense of who yes. someone is behind it that you're giving your money to. Yeah. If they're not willing to tell you who they are, they don't have to necessarily give you a last name, better if they do, but what that person's credentials are. If they're not willing to do that specifically, don't spend your money there. Okay, so what if a, a new writer has identified maybe five contests that yes. are definitely legit, they see yep. it on screenwriting, Twitter, people are discussing it. Should they continue to enter them even if they haven't won and they haven't gotten any favorable notes back? Yes, continue to write and get better at writing. I've known people for my CBS program that have applied four times and it wasn't until the fifth time that they got in because it wasn't until the fifth year that their material was good enough. But if year after year after year, you're not getting any traction, then there's, then you're missing something. And maybe you should take a class. Maybe you should do an online course. But again, only reputable ones. Don't waste your money on... I always like to say, in terms of contests, coming in third place in the Schmageggy Film Festival is going to do nothing for you. Um, yeah, push yourself to that seven, eight, or nine. Sure, sure. Yeah, you can, you can check in on what screenwriters are doing on, on Reddit, on LinkedIn. Yes. Yes. Um, on Twitter, and so yes. you, know, you see people who are very proud that they've placed and, and to, to follow suit, I guess. Yeah. Um, fortune favors the bold? Absolutely. Why do you love this? Uh, is this a saying or a proverb? Yes, it's a proverb. And do I remember who said it? No. <laughs> but okay. it is a famous saying. This, if you're not willing to take a risk, sell insurance. If you're willing to take a risk, if you're willing to boldly say, this is my vision, I stand behind it, I'm putting in my 10,000 hours, I'm going to get better, I have a story to tell, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to tell it, then interestingly, the universe comes along and gives you a push. That's what I think. Okay, I like that. Uh, what if there are responsibilities? You know, you talked about a, a woman that you're working with who, who ha had a child to raise mm -hmm. and understandably had to put things on the back burner sure. for a while. Um, how does someone navigate that? How, I, I don't know, I guess it's specific for each situation. I think so, but you know, I have a number of clients in that situation. And we come up with a plan for how they can get time in, even if it's a little time, on a daily basis, I, 30 minutes a day. And I know some writers that get up 30 minutes early before their kids get up. I know some writers that stay up 30 minutes later if their brain is still working. If you do that, and I say only work four days a week, I really believe you need to have a life and in order to write about something. You need creativity in to have creativity out. And just carve some time for yourself. I know it's really hard. I don't mean to be flip about it, but 30 minutes, even if it's 15 minutes a day, you will find yourself making progress. Okay, what if someone is lucky enough to have that time but they feel selfish. We, we talked to another, uh, both writer and mom, and th there is a connotation sometimes that it's selfish, that what I'm doing is, is 
you know, why, why am I doing this? I, I should be taking care of someone else. Codependent. Um, <laughs> okay. Read Melody Beattie. Okay. Right. Read Melody Beattie <laughs> for that codependence. Uh, okay. You have to find the strength inside yourself that says, I deserve this. I don't mean leave your children in the street, no. but carve out 30 minutes. You have to find inside yourself the essential you that yearns to be an artist and say, I'm going to devote some of my time and energy on a regular basis to that. Um, I just saw the documentary Judy Bloom Forever and she had to ultimately, I'm not suggesting this, but she had to ultimately leave her husband because he didn't want her to pursue her craft. Don't leave your husband. Don't leave your wife. I'm not saying that. Sure. I'm saying it's good to surround yourself with people that support you in your, in your desire. Oh, I want to see that movie. I did not. I love Judy Bloom. So it was a documentary, uh -huh. actually. Okay, right. Yeah. And that just came out? Just came out. Wow. Because now her, her Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. Yeah, it came out. Good didn't time. Didn't do well. Well, you know, that's a, that's a tough uh, comedic... Uh, it is. <laughs> you know, not everyone's going to get some of the humor there and yeah. things like that. But um, that was that's a landmark book for it many, many people. It absolutely is and was and is. Still is, yeah. Yeah. And has been banned. So, but I, I want to I wanna see that documentary. That's yeah. good. I like that. What is the general timeline for getting a screenplay read if you're a new writer and you're sending it out to professionals? Yep. Okay. Here's what I say. First of all, I have a pet peeve that I want to share with the people who are watching this. Do not ask somebody you've just met to read your script. It, I did a blog about Hollywood etiquette. Don't do that because I just want people to think about this. You're asking me, a person that you don't know, and I don't know you, to take two hours out of my life, away from my family and my work, to read your script. Wait until you know somebody. So please, please, please don't say, nice to meet you, will you read my script? But let's say you have been able to put it in the hands of somebody who is in the industry. What I say is, Give people six weeks to start and then reach out to them every month after that, every three or four weeks, and always be respectful and say, I know how busy you are. I just wanted to circle back and see if you've had an opportunity to read it. And if not, no worries. I'll check back in again in another month. I know somebody who gave it to a showrunner. And it took that showrunner a year to read it, but she finally did and she gave her feedback. But if you've been reaching out to people and don't annoy them, just do it regularly, but not annoyingly. And if they haven't responded to you in a year, stop reaching out and find somebody else. What about if someone sends it to someone or, or emails someone and says, I know you know so-and-so, fill in the blank. Can you get it to that person? Now you're asking that person to risk that relationship, their reputation, Don't breaking do protocol. Yeah. That is the same thing as asking somebody to read your script. You ask me to give it to... I have a funny story if you want to hear it. I do, yeah. Okay. My friend Doug who I hired at Amblin, which is Steven Spielberg's company, was at his grandmother's funeral. And he was walking back to the car with the rabbi. And the rabbi said, I have a script in my car. Could you please give it to Steven? Oh. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, I mean, don't do that. Okay. Um, you're asking me, if you say, will you get it to so-and-so, I don't know you, to use up one of my chits. To, you, to, to use up one of my credibility chits. Don't do that. You're asking too much. Now, if I meet you and we have a relationship and I really like you, I'll ask you to read your script. Let me read your script. 
And if the script is fabulous, I will pass it along. Don't ask me to pass it along, but if I love it, let me tell you, I'm going to pass it along because it makes me look good. I discovered this person, but you don't ask, you let it happen. Wow. What ended up happening in that situation or is that too personal? No, she got wrapped. With the, the person whose rabbi asked. Oh, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Right. <laughs> because Doug would no more take that person's script and give it to Stephen, his boss, than he would walk on the moon. What happened is that Doug would not hire that rabbi to do his grandfather's funeral. 